Forgettable Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Edible Bean School. Today I'm down at the Huron Research Station catching up with University of Guelph researcher Chris Jeller. Chris, how's it going? Thanks a lot, Bernard. Great to be here again. I want to talk about the future, but also I want to start with 2023 um, and some of the production challenges that we saw. I mean, you've been doing this for 30 years, uh, you know, applied research uh, at the university. What did you see this year and, you know, how do we tackle it? Yeah, so I mean, 2023, another great year, but another new and exciting year. Things are different this year than before. Uh, started off really dry. Uh, we started planting earlier than normal. Uh, we actually planted up till about the first week of June and then ran out of moisture. And I think growers had the same problem. Uh, had to wait till mid-June to get some water back into the ground so we could keep planting. Uh, but yeah, dry early start, so no root rot pressure in the crop at all. And then July and August, the monsoons hit, yeah, and it's it just wet. crazy rain. And so lots of crop with waterlogged soil and yellow beans and root rot set in. Some guys tried some mid-season nitrogen fertilizer, and it has, you know, it can have an mm -hmm. impact. But this is a short season crop. It doesn't have a long time to really respond to nitrogen fertilizer. And of course, if you put too much on, you damage nodulation. And so the crop suffers later from that. Right. So we have things to learn. Um, root rot is a big problem in this crop. We've done seed treatment work and it works great for the first 10 to 14 days. But really that mid-season root rot is tough. Yeah. It's really tough to manage. So we sit there and we continue to do work with nitrogen fertilizer. I've got lots of results from 30 years. I want to see that proofed in the grower field. I want to see some side-by-side -side strips done in the next few years mm -hmm. and document the impact in the grower's crop. And do we really need this? And when's the best time mm -hmm. and the right amount? Mm -hmm. Now, one thing, let's, let's take a step back here that you've worked on a lot and had a, a lot of success is uh, managing white mold um, yeah. in the field in edible beans. Yeah, so white mold, number one problem with dry bean growers, at least that's what they tell me in their own surveys. Number one production problem. Uh, we've done work for at least 25 years on this. Uh, at least 45 different treatments we've tested for white mold in both soybeans and dry beans. 2023, wow, did we get white mold. I mean, crazy amount of pressure in both crops. Uh, dry bean growers, the good dry bean growers, they were on top of it in July. They were spraying at the right time. Um, the key thing about white mold fungicides, they're preventative products. They have to go on before you see any white mold pressure at all. And so the dry bean growers, they're on top of it. They're getting it on right. Soybean growers, a few of them maybe not quite as, as used to mm -hmm. spraying for white mold. Uh, so certainly a bit more damage, I think, uh, in that crop yeah, and you're this year. You're happy with the products and the timings that you developed. We have great products and we have two key products that are being used in the marketplace right now. They're different fungicide groups so people can rotate between them to help with resistance management. It works great and, and the growers that are using it are having a lot of success. Mm -hmm. You also wanted to talk about anthracnose. I mean, a uh, devastating disease, but we've had a lot of success managing it in the seed lots, right? Yeah, so we had, when I started this job 30 years ago, we had recurring problems with anthracnose year in and year out. So we worked on it diligently. We developed seed treatments, we developed uh, fungicides, thresholds for, for the disease, uh, all kinds of management for it. But that's just managing the disease once it's in the crop. Right. We had to keep it from getting in the crop to begin with. And so the seed industry in Ontario has done a phenomenal job the last 30 years, really ramping up their efforts we now have really clean seed going out to the field each year, and that's preventing the problem from becoming a problem. So we don't have to use these fungicides and seed treatments as much. Right. And it's been a great plus. Another thing that's on your radar, it's, it went away, but it's coming back, and it's really sort of caught your attention, and that is managing leafhoppers. Yeah, so I mean, leafhoppers are a really devastating pest problem early in the season for this crop. Uh, you know, they're like uh, the plant's mosquito. They probe into the plant, they suck out juices, they gum up the veins of the plant. 
So we developed seed treatments. Uh, we had opportunity to work with Neonic uh, insecticides. We still have that option in this crop and they're a phenomenal tool for growers to use. Mm -hmm. um, insecticides, you know, we had good insecticide options. Uh, are probably our main one right now. Uh, products like Matador, uh, they're currently under review. And so that leaves us with very few options, but I was really excited. Uh, the last couple of years, we've had more pressure than I've seen in years. Mm -hmm. uh, but we started testing some new insecticides from Syngenta this year. Wow, uh, they are game-changing products. And so we'll be really excited when they come to the marketplace, hopefully in the next year or two. Yeah. And growers will have some new options. I want to talk about the future here as well. And I, I know one of the things that really gets you excited is Suzuki beans. A really nice stand right here. Yeah, so the beautiful thing about research is you're always working on new projects. I love that aspect of this job. Um, so I actually got pointed out to me by, by our edible bean extension specialist, uh, Mar Megan Moran, saying that, you know, this crop is really becoming a big part of our mix for dry beans in Ontario, and we need more data. Uh, so we started some good old-fashioned agronomy projects the last couple of years. Uh, so we're standing in a planting date by population study. So when's the best planting date? What's the best population to plant them at? Uh, we've got nitrogen fertilizer studies on station. We've got phosphorus banded fertilizer studies on station. Um, so we're trying to develop the tools that growers need to make this crop a success. Awesome. Hey, um, you've been at this 30 years. I know you're in transition uh, moving forward, um, but we're going to see you back here next year, right? I expect to be here for a little bit yet. Uh, I am going to retire soon, mm -hmm. but uh, we haven't quite got all the yeah. paperwork figured out here yet. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's coming to an end, but uh, I'm turning the page and doing some new things, but I'm excited. Awesome. And uh, we've got, but we've got some work for you to do, right? Absolutely. Awesome. Chris, thank you very much. Appreciate your time.